So, yeah, because I'm crying a lot. I like to cry so much, uh, you know, because you know why I like to cry? Because uh, I'm still here. Yep, still here. Still smoke alarms, still beeping. Gel pens, still not working. Still not really getting high. One more time, I say, I, I say, man. I gotta get high after that fucked up realization, right? How, uh, like, um, I'm being... Basically, by, I, I guess it's Satan, or whoever, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Simulation, voodoo, witchcraft, uh, my former self, who's junked up on morphine and ketamine with a needle in his arm, possibly, in a coma. He's literally shooting up all day, every day this hypothetical past version of myself that I used to think uh, was treating me like shit to make me appreciate life more when I wake up from the coma that I can't kill myself to wake up from because we wouldn't do that. Because we wouldn't um, go out like a bitch. Well, I wouldn't. I say we, you know, it's like the same. You know what I mean? It's just, I'm like, if this this looks and feels like a dream for so long, and I get that feeling of not uh, what I thought back then was my former self, um, us. What I thought was my former self saying, um, you know what? I know it's, uh, you might think it's a dream, and if you kill yourself or die in a dream, you wake up usually. In which case, you know, I debated it quite a bit. At first, I wanted to give my mom the lottery money, the lottery money, the lottery money, hence the five months on Silence of the Lambs episode. Five months of just, on a new level, yeah, like a new level of psychosis and a new level of schizophrenia where it's like all numbers and word-based to get the winning numbers because the internet can see into my future. It's kind of like insanely hilarious. Because <laughs> you really just, if you if you get down in the domes, you end up, being a victim of a uh, shooting at the Matrix Outlet Mall. Where they're showing, they're, they have a new uh, dream within a dream simulation. You know, like, like Inception, but they go four dreams deep in a simulation. Right by the bridge at the Outlet Mall. That's when you uh, become a victim of a shooting there because, because uh, AI is making money off of your futures, your future timelines, and your story, and your likeness, and you ain't got jack shit. <laughs> Nothing. And you think, you know what? I'll just, you know, they'll give me the numbers for the lottery then. They have to. They're literally telling stories about my day later on today. And then I live through it and all the stories happen to me. And they're reading my mind. Who? Like Professor Charles Xavier from X-Men who's telepathic. Like one of the grandest telepathic wizards of all time.
All they have to do is get him a robe and a pointy hat, and he could be the Grand Master Wizard of Telepathy for the KKK. Because the KKK, the, the highest ranked official, which it's so crazy that they fucking do this in the KKK, it's so insane. I don't know if anybody knows, but they literally... That's not what I typed. Ranking. Silence of the Lambs, episode 24, was a good episode. I go through a lot of really important shit on there that most people should listen to. It's probably, you know, one of the best. Same with purgatorying and school shooters cancel school. For real, I just, you know, let it loose at the end. But Silence of the Lambs, it's very fitting. It's so, uh... I've never even, I don't think I have seen the movie. <laughs> So Silence of the Lambs, oh yeah, so the KKK ranking system, code talk, you gotta do the t the code, you gotta talk code, lingo, limbo, limbo, lingo, limbo, lingo, which is probably just AI, referring, using KKK ranking system slash code talk. Which the rappers and the podcasters refer to as the code. Oh, you can't ever talk about what the fuck you're actually talking about. So you sound like a bumbling idiot. And you never know what anybody's actually talking about. Because uh, one thing is always different. I talk about this on a couple of the episodes at the beginning of the podcast. The lingo in limbo, which is purgatory, you know? But, uh, you know, that's just a nice shout out to my life because limbo, lingo, the same letters in each of those two words are L I B, no, L I O. L-I-O are in both words. Limbo, lingo. If you take those letters out, you get M-N-B-G. M-N-B-G. Which has a couple of meanings uh, tied directly to my life, of course. You know, BG, MN, it, and that's the thing. None of this really means anything in the end, but it all does. Kind of, uh, it's all like, but that's how you know it's not a coma dream. Because shit like that, like the word coma, yes, oh ma in Morse code, like human being. H U man B N G G seventh letter of the alphabet, which is the num seven. The number seven is heaven. It's God's number. Six is Satan, the devil's number. H U man B N G B in G like a beluga whale who doesn't like to visit home doesn't like to you know call and check up 
just roams the ocean eating cr- I, eating krill, you know, sardines, and every once in a blue moon, a box jellyfish. That box. Which is, you know, if it's, if, you know, foods are, if fish are uh, hard to come by in the whatever ocean you're in, they only, uh, their migration patterns are actually uh, towards the Arctic Ocean, which I had to do research myself because the beluga whale wouldn't, uh, you know, call me and tell me what's up, give me an update. Where are you at? When are you coming home? Hello? Nothing. It's just like, I go to the ocean. I live in Minnesota. I go all the way to the ocean. We're in the middle of the fucking country. Either way, you know, it's about the same distance. Of course I go west. There's more mountains. Better scenery. More national parks. (coughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, you go west, you just hit the road, and uh, you just keep driving, driving, driving. No, I don't stop in, at any of the national parks until I get to the ocean. Or well, I'll just fly in my Iron Man suit, which would be preferable, but it's in the shop right now. You know what else I would do after it's uh, out of the shop? I'd fly over to... Uh, Ukraine and Russia, probably kill all the Russian sh- soldiers, or at least kill Putin and end the war in my Iron Man war machine suit with the turret on the shoulder. Obviously, you want the fucking turret. Why would you not want to have the turret? It's like a, yeah, you just mow people down. If they're killing people, but if they're raping them, that's okay. We're fine with that here in this country with the mind rape going on. My God, dude. But that's that's all after I get to the Pacific Ocean. You have to get to... No, you, you, I was going to go into the mind rape, but I have to talk about this whale because I invested in just one of them. I'm not a fucking uh, pimp for whales all over the world and all the oceans and seas. No, just one white beluga whale. Approximately 3,108 pounds. Three thousand one hundred and eight. It's a decent weight. It's not that big. You're not that big compared to a blue whale. You know how much blue whales weigh? Like three hundred thousand pounds. Which is like one the beluga is one percent. The top one percent of the one percent. which is where my beluga whale ranks among all of the whales in the world. The top 1% of the 1%. Bernie had it right on that one, at least. <laughs> but she, yeah, she doesn't ever... I don't even know anything about her. Because I haven't met... The thing about wild beluga whales is it's crazy. They don't like to uh, be told what to do. And they're kind of like territorial. And if you take their food, (laughs) just don't. (laughs) Yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. That's why I am on another uh, return trip from the Pacific Ocean with no luck. 
Yep, I'm back. And it's silent here in the room. Because that's what the beluga whale would want. Because that's when I stuck my ear in the ocean water, in the Pacific Ocean, on the coast. You know, I did my echolocation calls with a... It's like a sonar speakerphone that extends hundreds of miles. So she would, she should have heard it. Uh, she should have heard me. I was there for like seven days. Yeah, I know, I know. Just like I didn't even leave the ocean. I stayed in the ocean the whole time. So yeah, seven a whole week, and not a. I didn't even get a response call at all. If she's fucking another whale, I can't have her like mixing with bad genes. You know what I mean? I have to approve all male whale specimens and possibilities and the only one is me because on the Iron Man suit which I didn't have at the time it's in the shop still I like built like a a way to like from the Iron Man suit enlarge my penis like a human penis though not a robot penis And fuck, like, big and just fits just right perfectly. And it's curved because I waistbanded it in my Iron Man suit when I was a child. Every time I got a boner, I waistbanded it right in the waistband. When I started getting boners, like, fourth grade or so. Yeah, fourth grade. It's been around the time I jerked off onto the computer, uh, the laptop keyboard, the family one. VictoriaSecret.com. Jesus. And I, uh, every time after that, whenever I was in school, you know, I'd be sitting in class or walking around doing whatever, jerking off. Thinking about, uh, man, that cigarette I had. You know, the first cigarette I had was like f right around the same time. No, no, not fourth grade. I was 14. So that'd be sixth grade. That's when everybody starts smoking cigarettes. That's when everybody should. If the tobacco companies had a fucking lick of sense in them. That's why they invented vapes. And that's why they banned vapes. At least the fruity, tasty ones. And that's why they banned menthol cigarettes. But not menthol vapes. What? What? And the thing about vapes, this is so crazy that I just noticed this now. Vapes are more of a, usually more of a short-term problem for uh, the human body in terms of lung, the lungs, and what it does to damage the lungs. Short-term vapes Versus long-term cigarettes. Because vapes, if you puff on a vape like a lot, and trust me, I know kids are used to fucking rip like huge rebuildable mods, like clouds that are so big. So big. And those ones, I don't know if those are worse or... Not as bad as the ones that I, like, one of them that I had, like a Kanger Tech 
uh, 3.7 volt double stacked mini batteries mod. Not a mod, but a, a 3.0 ohm coil. So like with 24 milligrams of nicotine in the juice. So most e-cigs like only go up to like 4.7 volt batteries unless they have unless it's like an insanely huge battery this kanger tech 3.2 3.7s were 7.4 volts of power running into the the e-cig tank so that's why i had to get such a high ohm tank and cartridges every time i would buy cartridges and vape because the e-cig clubhouse off of highway 65 they were the only place that sold the miners. They actually like, they loved it when kids came in. They actually <laughs> loved it. Like we would talk with them and chill, like not chill, but you know what I mean? Like they were cool about it. They loved it. They were probably making so much more money, so much. And for the underage kids, they just didn't put their sticker on the bottle. Smart motherfuckers. So everybody would go there after school. But usually a like a tank, like that kind of tank, it's not like a one that has a lot of airflow and where you can blow really big clouds. It's one that, that hits like a cigarette. Versus like a, it's one that's like, and it's really, there's not very much airflow at all. And there's 24 milligrams of nicotine. You can get zero, six, 12, 18, or 24. So I was running 7.4 volts. And the most they do for the big batteries is 4.2 or 4.7. Uh, I can't remember if they have a 4.7 big battery or not. Some of the batteries, you can fit two 4.2s, the big ones. But they they have like a uh, a tank, like, a, like an ohm tank with way more airflow. So there's not as much, uh, with more airflow, it doesn't, the coil doesn't burn nearly as fast, obviously. But with 7.4 volts and no airflow, you need a 3.0 ohm tank and cartridge. They're like 1.0 or 1.5 or maybe even less sometimes for the ones with more airflow. So my e sig dude, it would... I wasn't blowing clouds at all. Like, I would get small little fucking, like, cigarette puffs when it's really windy outside. But holy fucking shit... Did you get so fucking buzzed when you hit that thing one time? Like, I've never been more buzzed in my entire life except the first time I ever did dip. I, I was high for 30 minutes. I was, like, watching the fireworks in the sky, and I felt like I was drunk and high because I had a dip in. Nobody, uh... Jesus, man. The amount of buzz I would get from, like, if I ripped that e-cig in the bathroom at high school, which is where everybody went in between classes who had an e-cig, because the e-cig clubhouse sold the miners, and they don't smell like cigarettes, so you can literally just vape in the bathroom between every class and during every class when you go take a piss or a shit. Because that's what you do when you have an e-cig in high school. That's what every fucking e-cig. There were probably like 10 of us in the bathroom between every period. All hitting e-cigs in the bathroom. And then, you know, every once in a while, like, 
every between every class, like one, two, maybe three or four kids would come in to like actually use the bathroom. <laughs> and they just pee all nervously while well, everybody rips their e-cig. Dude, holy shit. Why did I bring up e-cigs? Oh yeah, because when they banned fruity juices and disposable like what is that jewel they had disposable like mango carts they stopped selling the mango carts but they still sell the regular tobacco and the mint menthol carts so you can buy at some gas stations in this fucking state you can buy a mint jewel pods at the gas station <clears throat> but not menthol cigarettes now let me let me explain why this is so crucial. Because this is so retarded. And I'm actually getting upset. Because I've gotten to buy cigarettes before in like Minneapolis or St. Paul where they don't sell menthol cigarettes anymore. Because apparently kids like menthol cigarettes a lot. So they stopped selling them in Minneapolis and St. Paul and a lot of cities around there. Not in Newport, though. Cottage Grove, yes. I believe in, no, in Woodbury? No, I don't think they did in Woodbury. But South St. Paul, which is where I live in Newport, Minnesota. Like a, any port in a storm. <laughs> For that one, I'm going to rip a menthol cigarette. Holy shit. Newport. Where did my menthol cigarettes go? In my apartment in Newport. Oh, oh, how are you talking on the podcast when you uh, oh, should be working? Because I have faith in the Lord. And maybe everybody else should have a little bit more faith themselves. Any port in the storm. New port. I want a new port for this storm. For this shit storm. Which is happening while I'm at the movie theater watching Twisters. You know the first one? The twist, it's just called Twister. I know I've talked about this before, but it's just so funny. And it's not funny at the same time. Because last time I talked about it on the podcast, you know, not to bring everybody down and depressed. It's not my fault. I didn't conjure up a couple of tornadoes in uh, the Kansas uh, Valley where there's tornadoes all the fucking time during tornado season. But I talked about it on a podcast episode. I can't remember which one it was. But I say, I think I've done it a couple times. Because it's just funny that they, like 20 years later, they make a Twisters movie, like the second Twister. But the, And there's two tornadoes in the movie. Not just one. It's just funny. And it's fucking pathetic. How goddamn uh, unoriginal Hollywood has become. It's probably because they're too busy raping children, drinking their blood in, uh, for the adrenochrome. I want adrenochrome now. 
We want adrenochrome now. We want adrenochrome now. We want adrenochrome now. But, you know, I, if you don't have much, just don't tell my buddies. We want adrenochrome now. I want it, but don't tell them. Any port in a storm, even if it's an underage one, and especially if they're not dead and their blood is still pumping through their veins, coursing through every fucking limb that they have left, due to losing one of them at school. How, might you wonder? Well, a dude ran up in there with a LKG light machine gun, which is like 100 pounds, and mowed all the kids down at lunch. So he literally lost an arm due to him being a, a, an Auschwitz... Uh, concentration camp survivor like me so he lost an arm man I'm a bit stoned and I'm kind of drunk now so this is when the memory with the gets real foggy like a fog rolling through a Pacific Northwest town, right on the water, but like a lumber city, like a lumber town, right on the fucking ocean, where I tried to communicate for a long fucking time, all the time, with my fucking beluga whale. I still haven't, I don't even know what she looks like. Does anybody else know what it's like to invest in like all of your life savings and your entire future, like eternal future? Imagine if it was like uh, the Eternals, the Marvel movie, just because whatever, where it was eternal, like you vowed your life to making money off of this beluga whale that roams the ocean freely as a wild animal. I'm not here to like fucking keep her in SeaWorld. Chained up like a, one of my dungeon victims. But I feed them. And I leave a, you know, like a suicide note at their apartment so their family doesn't have to worry. The beeping. The beeping of the smoke alarm. I just charged the batteries. They should be fine. Why are they dead right when I put them in? Well, guess what? I used to have a like a button up t-shirt. This is out this is out to you, Belug. Fucking whale bitch. I used to have a narwhal t-shirt, a button-up narwhal t-shirt with narwhals all over it, which is right around the same weight class. And same migrating patterns and locations. So I'm a narwhal now. Okay? I am. I guess I want to be. I want to be a narwhal so bad. Like, so bad. But not, you know, too much because wanting to be, like, another animal is kind of creepy unless you're trying to fuck that animal. 
So, not same species, but same. You know, we're both whales. So, yeah. I want to fuck. I'm trying to call you. I'm, like, reaching out. Although, not really. Because I realize that this is a free country at the same time. In a free world. A free ocean. Episode 24, Silence of the Lambs. Check it out. Chick, 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 check it out. Because it's a really good episode filled with a lot of hard-hitting fucking... <clears throat> just right in your fucking face with all that shit. But at the same time, with respect. And a mutual understanding that it's all good. It's all comedy, baby. Yeah, it's becoming really weird because I'm... I do. I used to be this... I'm not even that drunk. Like, at all. I'm like, I'm... You know, I'm... Heavily buzzed. So not quite drunk. I used to be like this... Before I even got home from work. You know? But I never drink in the morning before work, ever. So, I was never an alcoholic. That's the rule. That's the rule. Just don't drink in the morning before work, or at work. And you're not an alcoholic. Because if you're drinking before you go to work to like, because you're like, sh you're like fucking shaking because a headache wasn't enough, a, a, a mini withdrawal or a, as I like to call it, as most people call it, a hangover, because that's what a mini withdrawal, that's what a hangover is, a mini withdrawal from alcohol. Because when you have a beer, the, the hangover goes away. That's because it's a mini withdrawal because you drank too much the night before. So imagine you think that's bad, drinking one night, like a lot in one night, and then waking up the next morning feeling like piss and like chemical waste piss bucket piss. Where your eyes water when you're in the same room as the piss. That was all over the Twin Cities for three days because it was raining. <laughs> Which is a fact that happened last year. I swear to God, I'm not even lying about this shit. I need to ask more people about the piss, the piss rain. But it's been so long. It's been like probably 14 months, maybe 15 I miss times like that, about when I first started realizing that reality was really, really uh, not what I remember, normal. It used to be normal, where when it rained for three days straight in the Twin Cities, it didn't smell exactly like your piss bucket where you have Dr. Pepper coffee maybe a little bit of shit mucus, blood, cum spit dip spit dip, cigarettes iced tea ice cream all in one bucket so imagine the smell of that in your one car garage over the course of weeks 
just growing and fermentation, like fermented in the, even outside the, I talked about this last, last episode, but it literally, you could smell it from like a hundred feet away. That's how bad the piss bucket smelled. And I was proud of that piss bucket. I was actually like, I felt like it was an accomplishment. I'm not going to lie. Because I never thought that a bucket full of piss and other liquids and bodily fluids could smell so rancid from such a far distance with the garage door closed. I'm not even Joe. I'm not even, you know? And I would go in there for like a half an hour, maybe an hour. And not open the door and smoke. And you can smell it with the garage door closed from 100 feet away. <laughs> One day, I literally couldn't be in there any longer because my eyes were burning. I'm not even... My eyes were watering so hard and they it was like um if you were to chop an entire onion on your eyeballs that's what it felt like you know not good not great i couldn't be in the garage anymore i had to leave even though i didn't want to because i wasn't done smoking and hiding in my garage like a fucking paranoid schizophrenic who think who thinks that uh the neighbor it has snuck into the neighbor two garage stalls away has somehow cut a hole in his garage wall and then you know made a hidden pathway and like like trap door into the garage that was between mine and his so he there's four garages Mine was on the very right. His was uh, two garages over to the left, but not the farthest left one of the four. So there was one garage stall in between our two garages. And I noticed, like, holes in the wall and, like, wooden, like, the fucking wall looked like it moved and looked like there were drill holes. So I thought he was... I thought he had cut a secret compartment in his garage wall to sneak into the garage in between ours to spy on me and look at me while I'm smoking and doing whatever the fuck in my garage where I don't even know how he would be able to stand the eye, like the burning of the eyes from the next garage over. I don't know how he would do it. He'd probably... Blow his brains out. So I thought he was, I was, <laughs> I literally thought that he was spying on me because I heard his voice because of the fake skits. The fake skits, uh, <clears throat> that sounded just like him, but, uh, you know. I thought, you know, as time passed, I'm like, holy shit. Like, the, uh, with the internet and the fake skits two and a half years ago and the airplanes and the entertainment industry. It's like, uh... Yeah, I'm like, which one? Like, is... Which is the worst life? Mine? I thought mine, you know... And then I thought about my actual neighbor physically doing all of those things, like because he was just had like a petty beef for that long, but wouldn't say anything. I was like, oh my God, I thought my life was depressing. Holy shit. And the fact that I, yeah, I thought that <laughs> the Illuminati was uh, entertaining the people of the likes of that, you know? 
<laughs> I guess I was retarded back then, huh? Holy shit. But, uh, yeah, the fact that you can... They banned the Fruity Vapes because the kids like the Fruity Vapes. Because, because of those, nobody's, nobody likes menthol cigarettes unless if you don't already like smoking cigarettes. That's for sure. So the fact that banning the sale of them in Minneapolis and St. Paul because the kids are smoking so many of them is crazy. And it's worse on your body long term. Like in 40 years, you'll die of lung cancer. You know, you'll cut your life short. But with the vapes, you can get popcorn lung, where your lungs get moldy. Instead of tar, it's mold from the water vapor. If you vape too much and you inhale, and that'll kill you pretty quickly. A lot quicker than lung cancer from tar. But they have the menthol mint vape carts you can buy but you can't buy cigarettes menthol cigarettes in the same fucking city no kids are gonna be like switching to cigarettes they can just do the menthol the menthol fucking pods that's my point makes no sense I, I'm, I'm trying to like make like trying to think of it in my head and I'm like what They had the menthol carts right next to the area where they used to put the menthol cigarettes, and it's just empty. So, there's that. That's, uh, you know. The mind rape. Yeah, that's right. Not okay. God is salvation from that. Turn to God. I, I'm not, you know. I'm dead ass serious. Just do it. Trust me. Trust your gut. Trust your intuition. That light feeling you get of a... Uh, it's like when you're starting to feel the effects of like a Percocet. Bliss. Yes. Unless it's the opposite, because of the code, lingo, limbo. <clears throat> I wonder what uh, one of the pastors think. Just because, it, I'm not saying all pastors are bad, obviously. But the, I just remember, even at like the, like the weirdest things, like God is actually saying this. And then like, it's completely different than what... Uh, it's like, so that's your take on it. What was God's uh, when he was writing the Bible? I'm just, I'm serious. Or did Jesus write it? I honestly, I have to look into it. I have to look into it. But I figured, you know what? I'd rather just read the Bible up there. Nice and clean, brand new book. Right, like little, there's like a little writing section next to it on each page. It's a big one. Uh, yeah, the mind rape and the steering me of certain, like, like, it's probably just my brain damage. Seriously. And it probably turned it into exactly what I thought it was back then when I've come to realize. No, it's probably, uh, we just, the tumor, go with the tumor. Just do, yeah, that's the, obviously, it's the tumor's fault. What do you want me to do about it? Huh? Rip it out? I mean, it's not that far, you know, I could, you know, I have to, my, like, yeah, hmm. I just kind of figured it might, like, hit my brain first and somehow skip past the, I and just, uh, you know, I dropped dead. Preferably sooner, but no, you know. Lately, yeah. 
but uh, you don't give up. And that's, uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Sometimes forgetting things is good. Which I don't even remember what the fuck that was even about last year. I guess, uh, like I've always done, forget things every once in a while because I smoke a lot of pot. That's what it usually used to be. That's what it is now. Every time I smoke, I can't remember shit. So it's that and the tumor. The brain damage. That's about it. I wonder how. What, oh my god! If I dropped LSD in my eye with the tumor, if they like join forces and like blast me off, and they would get like rid of the tumor in the process because of the liquid LSD. Like it's a new study. Like they haven't released. They haven't done any research. Done any actual live studies. Which is, I don't know why it wouldn't just make the tumor disappear pretty much instantly. Seriously. Then all my migraines would be gone, which they're not even that bad, but maybe that's the tumor disguising itself. Not trying to, I mean, these are the kinds of things that rack my brain. Like the tumor's like, no, we're not going to give them that much pain. When he gets a migraine, because we don't want him to think it's that bad. Let's keep him, him not blind as long as possible. With clear vision. And then only use it to threaten him. This is what like, my tumor is talking to my brain back and forth. Like, we use it against him. Make him think that he's uh, about to go blind if he doesn't. Da -da 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 -da, or about to die. Da -da 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 -da. Fucked. I don't worry about things like that. But it is an interesting concept. And I don't know why, I don't know what other drug would provide any benefit at all, really. Than liquid LSD. Try to do it at an angle. My head tipped back a bit. Drip it right on there. Probably disintegrate. Dissipate. <clears throat> what are you gonna fucking give me a fucking lobotomy? That's what I'd feel like. Hmm. So yes, the KKK ranking system, code, doc. It's the code. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Fucking duck, duck, go. Yeah, no, the, the mind rape is not good. And, you know, if I had any say in it, I would, uh... Because it's been going on the majority of my life, I've come to realize, so. When I'm pretty relaxed and not really worried about too much because I have faith in the Lord. You know? That's what this all boils down to. All jokes aside. So the Grand Wizard is the national head of the Invisible Empire. So, in the country. Grand Dragon rule over a state known as a realm. Of course it's known as a realm. The Grand Titan, ruler of a dominion within a state or a congressional district. Grand Giant, head of a province or a county. Grand Cyclops, president or presiding officer of a meeting or den. Basic level of organization for the clan, of course. It's the den. I haven't even seen that term used before. I've looked this up a couple of times. Because I couldn't believe the Grand Wizard was 
I mean, I can. Hmm. A handshake. Yeah, you got to do the handshake. Huh. Yeah, some of the, like, this is every time I do research on the internet. It's like, yeah. Um, all right. Like, I proved to my, I proved it's not really a dream. Uh, pretty much proved it's purgatory. So I say we get the next guy in here. Guy or gal, roll him through. I waste time, right, Lord? You know, all jokes aside. All jokes aside, I'm serious. Very serious. I just keep fucking with the mic the whole time because, uh, I don't know why I feel like uh, anxiety, but I'm not anxious about anything. Things like that. Things like that that I notice about who, because I know who I am, you know? I know what I'm worried about, nothing. What I fear, nothing. What I am concerned about, nothing. What am I, am doubtful of myself or my faith? Nothing. Uh, lack of confidence, nothing. So all these things are completely non-existent in my uh, non-inserted, just normal self. Not one of those things. Not really much hate either. I'm not hateful. Nope. Not angry. Not fearing. So, that means there's no more suffering. Well. There might be. I don't know. I pl you know, I'd prefer not. I prefer not, but, um, you know, to kill some time in the process, I've been sleeping, and uh, trying to realign my spine, like, like uh, stretch it back out, because after last year, I slept in my bed lying flat like a normal person like 30 times. All the other times I fell asleep with my, like, I'm sitting in a chair, a gaming chair, or the couch with the legs popped up. So, and I, that was probably the times I did fall asleep every night. Because uh, over time, I've, uh, this world is, I've also gotten insomnia, some somewhat, I mean, but I don't really, uh, I don't know, I'll just literally just stay awake until I pass out because from, like, exhaustion or I'm just tired. Or my mind is, like, has this worry about uh, some force putting me to sleep on, like, when I'm not tired. Like, trying to delete my memories because I can feel it when I fucking wake up. <clears throat> and just by the worry that I never have had about these things happening, just from, like, because I realize I'm not worried about any of this shit. I got the Lord. So when you're that, con like, that content with your, uh, your higher power. If you see the pearly gates, since this is purgatory, don't, you know. <laughs> just trust. Just trust me. Just go through. Walk right through. Run right through. Crawl. 
if you have no limbs and no, you know, get a better pilot maybe. But it, it you know, because it may, if, if, uh, may be a while. I don't know. Everybody's different. Hmm. Yeah. Because when it feels, when you look back on your memories of your entire life, they're for me at least, they're mostly connected just solely to my visual memory of them. There's no, like, for most of them, there's no, the visual memory is not really connected with uh, other senses. Like, like smell is just, I remember who, what or who the smell is connected to. When I smell it again, I don't, you know, when I think back on the memories, uh, those ones don't pop up because I'm not smelling it in the moment. But they say that those memories are actually way more vivid and, like, detailed in terms of you remembering them because it's based off of the sense of smell. Because that's uh, somehow, like, uh, the strongest one. What the fuck does that even mean? The strongest one. Hmm. And then, you know, the pheromones thing. Then you think about uh, all your memories. Aside from that vision, where all four senses, aside from taste, I don't know why, uh, are very uh, increasingly intense and potent in their terms of how you, how strong, like how real each of the other senses felt as the time progressed with the vision getting absorbed by the light. And then saying, you know what, I think I can win the lottery down here, so I'm going to stay here for a little bit. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just go, you know, just go through. Unless you like, uh, so, you know, kind of suffering for a bit and being confused and uh, no money. Everybody in the entertainment industry, there's people on, on I feel like any every NFL team that uh, wouldn't be there if it wasn't for me. I'm being dead ass serious. I think, you know, And I'm not even going to get into all the fucking, uh, I'm not even going to do it because who cares really? Go to the Patreon. I should just put all the episodes there. You know, get why give it out for free. I mean, nobody listens still anyways when it's free. So that's just the way it is. Hmm. Yeah, and whenever I'm stoned, I don't know why I do. I can't even keep track of what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I believed it. Yeah. I went into that. Uh, so which life is worse? Mine with all this shit or somebody who's like that interested in me and the things I do, like, uh, your old shit leg. Your old shit leg, you know? I thought, holy shit, that somehow I would probably kill myself, and I probably would never kill myself. You know? So that's kind of what I... I was like, damn, dude. And then I thought about the fake skits one. You know, or the, you know, or the skits. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
T.I. A.W. God, I keep just fucking with the mic arm. But yeah. So at least the shit leg is... He has a physical body that he walks around in and, you know, has free will and free thought and free speech. In America, yes, in every country. That's how much faith you gotta have in the Lord. Because when, when somebody's soul is like permanently residing on one side, the light, in purgatory, but they're still not there in heaven, it's just kind of like a twiddle, twiddle in thumbs. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, it would be nice if there, you know, I bet there's another guy who would come in here. You know, took me 25 and a half years. Which, you know, I get everything. I'm not complaining. But, uh, well. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely pretty stoned. That's how unworried I am on a just a normal me basis. That's how dire it's become, I believe. I may just sound like I'm fucking crazy to most people. If I didn't, if I were to, uh, if you took me before the accident and told him, like, the day before and told the old me everything that I know now, uh, he would think, uh, you're fucking nuts. You fucking bat shit out of your mind. That's what I would think uh, six, seven, eight months ago, even. So the how dot how uh, drastic it's become in that short amount of time compared to the first accident when things became. But I know it's purgatory. I know it's not a dream. I know it's not. None of it. It's just made to look like one or <clears throat> mimic one, basically, from the research that I've done online. But if this was purgatory, that would also mean that it's kind of like the same concept of the dreamer controlling all of the knowledge and internet uh, articles, everything. But God. God in the tumor. So, yeah, basically, lost my train of thought again there. No, because what it is, is uh, still continuing to fuck with me in my memories, my life, the people around me's lives, uh, my family, who I, I say that because uh, I'm not, I don't, allow myself to see them. I haven't. I won't. I I really can't. Not here. Never again. Unfortunately. And then to learn that it was prov possibly because uh, I have light brain damage, a tumor in my eye socket. I smoke pot. And when I'm thinking in deep thought, like a deep sleep, I go deaf most of the time, unless I force myself to try to actively listen and think at the same time. But I, I don't know what it is in my brain. It like shuts off my hearing when I start doing that sometimes. I've never... I don't even know what that, what, like how that happens. If I was always like that, I honestly, I don't know, probably. But so then that would be like used as a way to, the internet would fuck with me if they were reading my mind and I would be, what I come to know now because I'm not worried about anything and I know who I am, how I feel about shit, if I feel anything, is uh, I'm not worried about a goddamn thing. 
No. Not fearful, none of it. So, looking back on the last two and a half years, my entire life, essentially, I'm like, was I ever worried about anything in my entire life? Or is that just uh, who I've become, but now it's uh, because of what? It's like, what the fuck? Because I never really would have thought that I never would have made these like weird paranoid schizophrenic, schizophrenic like delusions and assumptions connecting things that have nothing to do with each other because I realize when the, that's not happening, I never do that. When there's no thoughts like connecting these things and not just connecting them and realizing that I'm being kind of paranoid, which is what I would have normally done back like six years ago. I'd be like, oh no, you're just being paranoid. And then it would, I would believe that it was just because I was paranoid because it wouldn't happen again. So that's how you know when uh, you got skits and you got fake skits. Because I don't believe any of these things are true. So back when I was really, uh, really off the deep end, they, I would realize that I'm just overthinking and over being over anxious, over, overly anxious about things. And then they would, that feeling would go away and it wouldn't continue happening because I was worried about it. It would actually do the opposite because I would realize that I'm just being paranoid and making shit up in my head that isn't fucking happening in real life. That's the huge difference because now it intensifies in my environment and in my mind and in my wheelhouse of emotions, which I don't really have. I don't feel worried or impending doom. Yeah, I'm not quite at the Shire yet, you know? I'm trying to get back to the Shire. So, yeah, when I realized that all of those things, when I would think about them and feel them, they would actually like make me feel like uh, my environment or I, it's going to just get worse and worse and then I might die at any second because I might be in a coma dream blah, 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 blah. and like a weird creeping, gradually building like fucking, like that's exactly what's going to happen if you don't do the right thing right now. At any second, you're going to die because... You should have killed yourself to wake up from a coma dream that you can't, that you haven't been able to prove is really not one, not one that you seem to want to wake up from. Because you're all junked up. Just like the dudes who uh, lost the war. Well, technically, it wasn't a war. The United States government says so. We didn't lose the Vietnam quote unquote war because it wasn't a war. Yeah. Dude, I would say the same thing too. Why would you want to admit that you lost to Vietnam? And then you got half the country in this, half of the, over half the country probably thinks we beat Vietnam. That's how fucked everything is. But yeah, they need to figure out the menthol cigarette and uh, fruity vape cart debate. Uh, they got to get to the bottom of that because that's that's the like the the idea is that they're banning the menthol cigarettes because they're also banning the fruity vapes, but you can get they're not banning the menthol vapes, which more kids smoke va e cigarettes vapes then do cigarettes so much more like 10 times probably maybe 15 so they're not going to be switching to the menthol ciggies they can do do the menthol pods where the menthol cigs used to be sold they used to be placed there back when they sold them because the kids uh are smoking too many of the cigarettes you see Who's passing these laws and these bills? 
I'm serious. This, what are we doing? Does anybody think about anything? Does anybody have an original thought? Myself included. I was thinking, what is thinking? What even is thinking anymore? And I thought, what the fuck kind of question is that? And it's one that I still don't know the answer to. Where do your thoughts come from? Why do you do the things you do? Don't do them. Fight the urge, whatever it is. Just be yourself. I don't, I've been saying this for fucking goddamn months. Truly. I've been writing it down everywhere. I'm just like, holy Martha. I bet she's not alive anymore. Of course she's not. Of course she's not. But then I sit here and I realize, hmm. And to know that every time uh, it just builds off each other, the fake skits and the telepathy, quote unquote, which I said that the telepathy, the only reason I came up with that idea, when I, I don't know why it should ever, it should be a thing, just because I can't, had an idea about it. That's my, that's another, like, umbrella point at the top of all the other points that I've made on all the other episodes and all the future ones, if there are any. The main one is, just because I have a take on it, or I make a joke about it, or I think it should be something that is uh, taken more seriously, doesn't mean that I should, uh, or anybody, personally, just uh, putting uh, my two cents in. I don't think that uh, should ever be in my control as to how the entire world is possibly run. Or it affects, you know, anything. I don't think that should ever be up to me. But if it were, I'd send myself to heaven a long time ago. And I wouldn't need uh, the fake skits, who I proved as fake skits on the episode today. And uh, whatever, quote-unquote, telepathy, but it's also filled with a belief that I believe it's true and it's going to happen. And I need to do something to stop that. When I don't believe that, I am one should or is responsible for making that change to that worry that I'm not worried about, nor do I believe because I'm not worried about it. I don't believe it. But I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why I believe that? No, I don't. So how long has it been then that going on? How long has been that been going on? All my anxiety, all these years. But that was the umbrella point above all of the... And I'm not even trying to like be a fucking like know-it-all. But I'm just like questioning the uh, legitimacy of uh, everyone's entire reality, essentially. But I, like in my eyes, I... I think I believed it's purgatory because right when I shifted my beliefs towards that like six weeks ago long time considering I had none eight months ago but it's not you know I'm not you know I can you know it's uh at one point I want to I've already yelled at God but that's back when I blamed him for all this fucked up shit but then it's like, okay, so then it's Satan, and that's even, like, worse. So why should I be up to... When I can feel a difference in the vibe in the air, uh, when I started believing that this is purgatory and that me and God are on the same page back when that finals game was on, like, so long ago, and I felt like a, sw like a, a flip of a switch when I was watching the game, when the announcers were talking about the game, 
it felt like uh, it was, um, which used to be because of my subconscious uh, coma dream thought and idea initially, but I've proved it's not a dream or a coma dream. So that shouldn't be happening anymore. That's my point as well. That's another, uh, that's like right near the, the top of the one, the very top of the, um, I mean, but it's like, you know, since it has been somewhat my take on things, but it's some, it's some, some half the time it's like dumb, like movies like Barbie. I was calling shit like Barbie cuck. Gay by tranny Barbie cook. And then they came out with the Barbie movie that last summer. You know what I mean? It's shit like that for so long. Like, I was talking about how the Illuminati are not uh, energy vampires. They're velociraptors that can shape shift. As a joke, I thought it was funny. And then they had the fucking, like, the Velociraptor commercial for Christmas. The robot Velociraptors. You know, it's shit like that all the fucking time. And I'm like, this is, this can't be a dream. This is why I had a hard time believing it. Because I'd never do anything like that. Unless I was just trying to kill time while in a coma, which is like, I don't know if that's how comas work. I can't, I can barely dream when uh, I'm not like near brain death you know i could barely i just go along with the ride for every, all my dreams i don't try to control anything i just like because uh, whatever it makes it more fucking weird and then i never remember them anyways so whichever one gets me up there i can be in a coma i trust god's God's plan for my recovery from waking up from a coma in purgatory and then waking up in heaven. That's the thing. That's the main point. That's the main one. I don't worry about any of these things because I trust uh, in God's plan. You know, very immediate and soon I could feel it. I know it's happening probably tonight. So I'm going to get this episode out and that's about it. Probably I might talk about, uh, yeah. Cause yeah, I'm just going to stop it here. Huh? God is salvation from all this. Clearly. I'm serious. I'm not being sarcastic. He really, it really is. He is there. He's a gracious God. Very, very, very gracious.